everybody to Bliss Fully Aware, the show in which me and my friends discuss what's going on in fandom and fandom news in general. I'm Bliss, and as always, I'm joined by my lovely co-host, JD. Hi, JD! Hi, Bliss. How are you today? I'm good. I'm back from Canada, so... I'm getting used to being back on Texas time. Well, you know, you know how it is. It's rough is how it is. (laughs) I'm tired (laughs) all the time. (laughs) But otherwise, I'm fine. How are you? I, I am doing good so far anyway. Um... You know, just having just having that them late summer vibes. It's sweater weather up here in the frozen north. Um, so I'm having a good time wearing my sweaters and uh, walking through the beautiful weather up here. It's been a little rainy a couple days, but it's mostly just been that nice, crisp, uh, not too humid. Uh, probably like our average is probably 70 degrees. It's, it's very lovely up here this time of year. That's cool. You're right. It's cool. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, shall we jump into it? We shall. I, um, missed out on some drama, I hear. And I believe this was, uh, I believe this was a request uh, uh, in the comments of like of our YouTube, was it our YouTube that that had the comment on it? I believe so. Yeah. So I don't know actually how to say this artist's name, but I am going to say it however I darn well please. So, mm-hmm. um, but our lovely commenter uh, asked us if we were going to get into the uh, Kino draws controversy. Uh, and apparently there's been more than one, uh, and this is what we love. This is drama upon drama. Uh, but I guess I will start at the, what, I, I guess we'll start at the end and we'll move backwards. So, um, Kino Draws is an artist, uh, actually a very talented artist. Um, it does tattoos now, apparently, but has been facing a bit of controversy because they were doing oh and you know of course it was the r flag means death fandom oh good because (laughs) it can be no other fandom like i'm telling you it can be no other fandom um these people do not do not know how to handle themselves unless they're like in the izzy canyon they they don't know how to, to handle themselves so the zine was called um, Run Me Through, and Kino was apparently running it alone, which, like, I don't, I don't see any problem with that, but, but zines, like, especially collaborative zines, it's way easier to have more than one person, but, but up to two, like that, like two or three, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, just to be, you have an artist wrangler, um, somebody who, you know, is running the, the, the platform that you're selling off of and somebody else to hold them accountable. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's, you gotta have, you you gotta have like enough people that it makes sense, but not too many because too many in a zine is bad. It's no bueno. It's not, it's not okay. For sure. So. That's how we've seen many a zine fall. Yes. So many zines have failed just because of, like, nonsense, like, way too many mods who are not communicating. So, Kino um, allegedly was running this zine by themselves um, and would kind of blow off uh, people's... Uh, there were a couple of users on Twitter who apparently offered to help with the zine um, when it seemed uh, like there was a hint that Kino was um, was struggling a little bit with it, uh, but just kind of blew them off, whatever. It was a charity zine. It was supposed to go to uh, an abortion fund, I believe. Oh, nice. Yeah. And allegedly, okay, mm-hmm. allegedly... The charity only ever received a dollar. Oh. Yeah. 
So um, apparently the zine was kind of like cobbled together. This was like a digital only. Um, there were missing artists, there were incorrect credits, and a whole bunch of people bought this scene in support of this abortion fund. Mm-hmm. And when, you know, when people were like, did the money actually get to the charity? Kino was like, yeah, here's my, you know, here's the receipt, right? So people contacted the charity on the date that it said, you know, like the the date that the that the receipt said, and the charity was like, we only have a record of one dollar having been donated. Ooh, yikes! Right, <laughs> right, yikes! And like, apparently, this is not a a one time deal. Like, this isn't like a one time issue. Uh, this is. You know, also allegedly a pattern of behavior. So you have like a lot of people who bought the zine who are now extremely angry and you and now like the zine, the zine discord was was deleted. You know, there's all this stuff that was deleted that, you know, so now like people don't have the means of contacting everybody who is involved. Da, 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 da. You know, like everything's real shady. Right. Sure. And they're kind of like looking into it. Like, you know, Kino was like, oh, it was because like it the charity thing didn't go through on, you know, because it was an amount that was too big. But why would it take one dollar? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that doesn't make any sense, you know. So there was there was a lot of like excuses going around. And Kino has just kind of like been coasting through all of that, like and not really. um uh, oh, and stopped posting on Twitter for a while and just kept posting on, like, Instagram and TikTok as if nothing was happening. <laughs> like, like literally as if nothing was happening, which, like, that's... That's my favorite <laughs> move when people pull that shit. Just that bold move. It's like nothing, nothing's, nothing's wrong. actually happening. Like... <laughs> Is there drama? <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> um so yeah, like you have you have like all these people going, you know, going ham over this, you know, this money that's allegedly been stolen from, you know, these people who bought this janky ass zine and thought that their money was going to a charity, but where did all the money go you know like if the charity doesn't have it where is it you know and i think we all know where it is you know oh for sure because like yeah it'd be nice if every zine was able to just like directly you know have like a separate account that would be dedicated only to go to that charity but like I feel like that's kind of unrealistic in some fashions. Like I'm I'm probably not going to open a whole ass account when I sell my charity zine. I'm just going to sell it and you're not going to use your burner bank account. But yeah, as if I have a burner <laughs> bank account. There's some level of trust that that especially with my zine's going to be physical copies and it's going to be available, you know, indefinitely until i don't have any more physical copies right so like there's some level of trust that you're that you're giving people you know when you when they're like oh hey i'm gonna be doing this charity blah 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 like i'm gonna be doing a lump sum at the end of like six months or something like that well because it would be easy it would it's actually gonna be kind of easy for me because every time i do a payout i'm gonna be able to take a picture of the payout and then like take a screenshot of the payout and then I'm going to be able to do a screenshot of my donation or whatever and it's going to have dates and times and whatever and if anybody wants to check on that they're going to be able to verify it through whatever charity I'm I'm doing it toward which is going to be the Jewish Discovery Center of Buffalo so but so like it is possible to make this work easily (laughs) Easily and without, you know, without making a whole ass new account or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. like the the real thing is you've got to you've got to know that there's going to be people out there who who are going to check on you. 
Especially if you have a pattern of behavior like Kino has. And if your zine's not, if your zine's janky, like, if your zine is janky, they're gonna, they're gonna be looking into you a little bit harder. If you make a janky product and people are like, and people are like, wait a second, I remember this person. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they're gonna be like, okay, maybe we need to check on this. I, t I just don't understand how people think, especially if you have a zine that is, you put it on pre-order, you've made, you've, you've marketed it well enough that so many people have bought it that it was supposed to be, it was supposed to have had however much going into it, you know, a decent amount of money, like a good chunk of change. Of course they're going to check on that. Like, is this really where that money went? Like, how come How come the zine is so janky? Mm -hmm. If that's the amount of attention that was paid to the product, how much attention was paid to the payout? How much was paid to, like, the uh, the money exchange? Like, if you didn't take the whole thing seriously, what are we supposed to think about what your motivations were when you did the whole thing like were you doing this because you genuinely wanted to um create a piece of art and uh give everything up to charity you know are you doing this for the abortion charity or are you doing it for the art or are you doing it for you sure and obviously it wasn't for the art because you couldn't even be arsed to put everything together and format it correctly and have all the credits and you know and all that like Obviously, that's not where your heart was. So, where was it? You know. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna put out a grift, at least put out a a passable product. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's where like that's where like crooked politicians usually get it right. You know, they're like, okay, we're gonna drag on this thing so we can get as many kickbacks as possible. Um, but the thing's gonna look great at the end because we spent so much time on it. You know, sure. uh, because, you know, I want to be able to do more grifts in the future. So you got to always be a forward thinker. You got to if you want to be able to do more grifts in the future, you got to make your first or second or third or all your grifts look good. Just a little commitment. <laughs> yeah. And not only this, but we know that Keno is on Artists Beware. Um, there is a, mm -hmm, there is an article on, on Artists Beware. Um, it was, let's see if there's a date on this. Ooh, it is from 2021 in December. So it's kind of lengthy, but, uh, but it's worth it. It's by Ruchu, I think is how you say that. Um, it's essentially about how Keno was opening commission slots on Twitter uh, and Ruchu emailed asking if any slots were open and if so, what they were interested in getting. And they agreed to pay $160 um, and paid the 160 in full. So, so first mistake here by Ruchu was not half before, half after. Mm -hmm. Like legit just paid the full amount like right away. That was September. In November, they follow, did a follow up asking how the commission was coming on, coming along, and uh, and had not asked for a timeline. I never ask for timelines um, with my artists. Like, uh, God, I've waited for commissions so long. <laughs> <laughs> I, in fact, there's probably some commissions that I completely forgot about, and the artist probably completely forgot about them. But also, I didn't pay for them sure like i didn't i didn't pay for them up front you know what i mean i never pay for commissions up front i'll do half if they ask for half mm -hmm. um but usually what happens is i pay you when i have a thumbnail like i don't i don't pay you after i send you a concept you know what i mean like i, right. I pay you when when i have a thumbnail design you know and like and i know that oh hey this is on the board you know Right. So Kino apologized for the delay in, in November, saying uh, that they could expect it in a few weeks, weeks and that they would be sent a sketch ASAP. They were not contacted 
again until they emailed again in February. So this is September to November to February asking for another update. They responded apologizing for a lack of communication and cited multiple personal reasons and said that they could either get a refund or continue waiting. Uh, they said they would continue to wait. Uh, there was no communication until they initiated it again in June. Damn. Asking for another update. Like, like, dang, that, this is some patience here. This is a lot of time. That's somebody who really wants a commission from that person. <laughs> I have, I have waited longer. Um, well, okay, so I, I don't think I've waited longer for an individual commission. Um, I have waited longer for, like, projects, like, collaborative projects. Um, mm. but usually I'm in, like, not constant, but, like, intermittent communication with, you know, whoever I'm working with, and, uh, and I know what's going on. You know what I mean? This isn't like some rando that I'm working with that I've never, you know, that I don't talk to on a regular basis. For sure. So let's see. Um, wow. All right. So that was June. Uh, they responded same day saying they were working on commissions that day and that I should have something soon. I said, great. Looking forward to seeing the sketch. So they haven't even gotten a sketch yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a full year after they had originally asked for this commission. Okay, and actually a full year and 20 days, they emailed asking for another update. They still don't have a sketch and for a concrete answer or estimate as to when I can expect the commission. Cano responded the same day asking if I had not received the email they had sent out. I did not. I double checked my inbox, deleted and junk folders for said email, which stated they didn't have the energy to work on art for other people and that refunds will be going out bi-monthly and that they will have a concrete time frame of when to expect the refund after they receive their first paycheck from their new job. I said, no worries and good luck with the new job. Okay, so refunds would be going out bi-monthly, like twice a month. How many refunds did they have? You know what I mean? Yeah, they have to actually send out enough to break up a check. Right. Like. How many refunds did did you how many commissions did you take, you know? Right. I I wow. I I mean I I don't do art, so I don't know, I don't know how many commissions one usually has on the docket at one time. I guess it depends on, you know, how organized you are as like a person. Um but damn. And not only that, gosh, all of these commissions that you weren't working on they all were paid up front? Holy jeez. Like, wow, that's that's a lot of cash to just be sitting on and not have done anything for. So, assuming, you know, you had all of your stuff was like $160 or around there. Um, so, again, I email Kenno as they have once again not contacted me on the 8th of December. Again, asking for an update. They respond the same day saying that they get paid on the 15th and that I can expect a partial or full refund then. It is currently Wednesday, the 15th. At the time of me writing this, I have not yet received an email from Kino or PayPal. My issue is not that I couldn't get a commission from them or that the refund has not come through yet. At this point, it is the lack of communication on their end and misleading updates. Being told to expect a sketch in a few weeks and then told several months later I'm actually working on them today. Yeah, I mean, they they put, uh, like, pretty much all of these back and forths in there. Mm -hmm. And this isn't, this isn't the only time, you know, that Kino has been accused of this. There's, um, their fur affinity was banned. Uh, there's a, if you, if you, Oof. you know, went to their fur affinity account, this user was banned because they scammed multiple users made no attempts to reconcile with them, and created new accounts presumably to continue the cycle. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty deep cut right there. That's a pretty, uh, pretty big allegation coming from the Fur Affinity staff. You know, you're, you're banned because you, you scammed, and, you know, the word scammed multiple users. Now, 
I understand artists sometimes go through some shit. They're getting new jobs. They're, they don't feel like doing art for other people or whatever. Like that's a thing that happens. Um, sometimes it's pro for prolonged periods of time, but that's when you take the initiative to, to do refunds, you know, like, Hey, here's your money back. I am refunding you. I'm so sorry that this happened. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like this is totally on me. Da, 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 da. I mean, that person never got their refund. Uh, presumably n nobody from Fur Affinity who, you know, was scammed got their refunds. Um, and no one who paid for this zine ever got a refund. There was also some speculation that the two, count them two, GoFundMes for top surgery for Kino. What, like, did you really need two GoFundMes for top surgery? Because they, cause they, they got a decent amount of money. For that I mean I know it's a chunk of change to get top surgery but you should generally have like information from you know insurance or doctors and you should get a solid amount before you do your GoFundMe so that you have a goal to raise right you know so that you wouldn't have to do two or three or however many like and maybe you're jumping the gun if you don't have a solid kind of quote for top surgery or I don't know um, there was some speculation that, that, was that a thing that ever happened? Like, it does any, I don't know if anybody in the comments would know. I don't know. Um, all those speculations might be totally off base. Might be real out of pocket there. I'm just, uh, reporting the news. That's fucking crazy, though. Like, to be getting away with all of this for so long. <laughs> right. And then turn around and start a zine and have people still back it. I mean, granted, there are going to be people out on the internet who don't know, you know, so-and-so from the next person. But, like, that fucking blows. <laughs> yeah. And, like, there were there are other people, like, on Twitter and Tumblr who are talking about how, you know, their commission experience with Kino was awful. It was terrible, blah, blah, blah. Do we know if any of that stuff is legitimate? You know, not 100% sure. Uh, the one person was like, we were communicating on Twitter, da, 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 this is how we communicated. I didn't have any other, you know, I, I, I wasn't, I didn't communicate via email or whatever, any other way. And then they were like, oh, didn't you, you should have, you should have emailed me. Well, if I've never emailed you before, why would I think that I should email you now? Right. You know, like, and, and they got the, they, they definitely felt very disrespected, um, you know, as if this was a huge inconvenience for, for Kino. And it's like, no, no, you, you took their money. <laughs> like, you have their money. <laughs> You're like, $160 is not something you, you pay lightly for art. Right. You know, like that could have gone to groceries that could have gone to your phone bill that could have gone to your own top surgery like that. Mm. If they are really passionate about this and you have art that is very skilled, um, they love the style. They want that they paid you and they didn't get it like this is it's serious. It's a serious, you know, it's a serious thing. And so now we have. The people in the R Flag Means Death fandom, um, apparently the zine is going to be taken over. Oh. Yeah. By a uh by another user. Allegedly. Allegedly. Because there's some artists uh and some creators who don't want to be part of that zine anymore. They don't want to be affiliated with it. Uh so they just want to be taken out of it. So I don't know what uh, what it's going to look like um, or even if it's uh, going to be happening. But another user uh, did offer to uh, take it over and see about putting it all together correctly so that at least the, the artists get to have their work out there in the zine that it was meant to be in. But nobody's getting a refund that right. we know of. You know, this, there's no, there's no, like, redemption here because, you know, 
there's no news of of anything happening that we don't already we haven't already seen so Kino's still out there doing what they're doing so yeah when you go to uh when you go to Kino's twitter um from six days ago there is a set of tweets i genuinely don't know what you guys want from me at this point you can contact the charity to verify the donations i've done all i i can do to prove that I've actually donated the money, I do not have it. Apparently, there is a Google Doc that is extremely invasive and digs into my past completely without context, uses names of people I've been close to, my dead name, my parents' names, my coworkers' names, and at this point, I think I have to seek legal protections. Whoever is doing this has no goal other than to cause hurt. Most of the information in the Google Doc that I found is either conjecture regarding my finances slash employment status at any given place or flat out untrue so hmm. apparently there is stuff going on okay Kano. yeah yeah like like what like first of all don't be doing this <laughs> yeah uh that being said there is a correct way to uh pull a call out big air quotes uh it doesn't usually involve somebody's parents or if you're classy, it doesn't involve somebody's dead name. Um, yeah. I just... Ugh, that gives me the ick. <laughs> yeah, there's an icky... There's an ick feeling there. Um, that doesn't make what Keno did okay. It just... Right, so... <laughs> There's, there's, uh... There's other, like, little receipts uh, from August of 2023 that are like you have donated this much to the national network of abortion funds and it's a screenshot of the entire page mm -hmm. and because because apparently they didn't realize that the first one that they sent through didn't go through i don't know how you don't see that on your bank statement i mean i i i understand that some people are just not financially savvy they don't look at their bank statements like i do like every freaking day because you can access it through like every single banking app uh on your phone you know like i mentally know what is supposed to be coming out and what's supposed to be coming in and you know like I th I'm not going to forget $1,300. That's a lot of cashish. Yeah. Like, like $1,300 isn't something I didn't know was there. Yeah, $1,300 you know? is something you can go into your bank and be like, oh, that's money that I didn't have before. Yeah, and and also, you know... <laughs> I mean, not to be like this, not to, not to, you know, have a piece of conjecture, but I mean, I would assume that if you had that amount of money and you didn't see it leave, you know, that would be, that would be a little bit of a red flag that something didn't happen the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. Um, and like what? Well, if you're having trouble paying your refunds for commissions and you had your new job and da, 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 da. like, like, obviously you've had to take a closer look at your finances through the years because, well, uh, allegedly doing refunds, you know, bi-monthly for whatever. Um, so obviously there was being able to access how much money you had and being able to budget or something poorly maybe, but, but you still would be able to see it. Sure. $1,300 isn't exactly something that, that, oh, I, I just randomly have this money now, you know, like, oh, that, mm -hmm. that, oh, that must be mine now. Or even, yeah, possibly... Oh, it didn't go through, so I guess the universe just wants me to have it. Right. That's that's like if um, <laughs> one time I got into an accident and the and the uh, the insurance adjuster came and she accidentally printed out a uh, a check that didn't have my deductible taken out of it. So she had to print another check, and she took the first one with her. Right. So I had the second mm -hmm. check. She took the first one. Later on in the year, I get a totally unmarked 
envelope, I open it up and it's the first check. It's it's there's nothing there's nothing written with it. There's no explanation for why my insurance company sent me this incorrect check. But I knew the context behind the check was that doesn't belong to me. I already cashed the check that was that belonged to me. Right. Th- that had my deductible taken out of it. This check doesn't belong to me. It may have my name on it. They may have sent it to me. But if I cash this check, that is committing insurance fraud. So the universe doesn't want you to have that money. The universe is tempting you to commit fraud. Your responsibility is to not do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is the universe <laughs> testing you. And, you know, you failed. <laughs> like, <laughs> you failed at that moment, whether it was by what, whether it was by neglect, whether it was um, whether it was on purpose. Who knows? I don't know. And I don't care. But whatever the cause was, you failed. The important part is that that we're pretty sure that this second donation must have gone through because uh, nobody has said that it didn't. Okay. There's like people who are like at this point until it's been independently verified by the charity, lots of people are not going to believe it, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, No one has said that it was verified by the charity, um, but... But because no one has said that it wasn't, you know, it's like, okay, but nobody, nobody wants to talk about how that, oh, that was verified by the charity. You know, nobody wants to say that. Nobody wants to be the, the bearer of good news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so my assumption, I didn't do any, uh, you know, digging into this. Uh, my assumption would be that it's true, that, that this was actually, um, this was actually sent on the 17th of August, 2023. But also, you know, how do you not notice over a grand, you know, blah, blah, blah. So Kenos decided that they're going to abandon Twitter. Um, Good for you. Probably for the best. Probably for the best, yeah. Um, Like in just like a self-preservation type of of way. (sighs) The worst part is just like, if this was just caused by like ADHD or like you know something like that like i just i feel bad i do mm-hmm. like it's just it's something that's really difficult to deal with like depression ADHD um any type of just something that can happen to you and it just it doesn't make sense to you nor the world and now you have somebody creating some crazy google doc with your parents names in it i mean that's pretty shitty that is shitty but like also it's shitty to not follow through on something you said both both things are shitty (laughs) yes both things everyone sucks here in the i am the asshole post everyone would suck here Mm mm-hmm um, but yeah, I mean, this, this created like a pretty decent controversy. Um, and we love controversy. God bless. Uh, at the Blissfully Aware podcast, we adore controversy. Yes. God bless. God bless everyone who gives us controversy. But yeah, so I think that's, I think that's all I got. I think that's all I got for this. Okay. Okay. Well then did we do the thing? I th- I think we did. I think we talked about the thing. Like, is that is that enough of talking about the thing? I mean, I think so. I think we both land firmly on the <laughs> don't commit fraud <laughs> stance. <laughs> <laughs> like, even if it's just via neglect, just do your very best not to commit fraud or like you know just steal charity zine funds like even if it wasn't on purpose like like really really make your best effort not to do that i tell you what though with the new season of our flag means death coming out i am very excited for new drama to be happening out of that fandom oh and you know you know there's gonna be so much new drama because that fandom cannot handle itself 
It's delicious. I have clients at work who come in uh, to get their nails done and <laughs> they sit down. They're like, so I was on Twitter and I'm like, oh, baby, tell me. Tell me oh about God. it. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I have coworkers who uh, who are invested in all of this so naturally we all come together in the morning you know if we had a water cooler like um that would be <laughs> like that would be just we would just be twittering all over it <laughs> just like, oh my god we uh, must talk about the drama well i'm sorry to everybody who invested in that zine uh hopefully the funds actually went to the charity and uh, hopefully Keno has finally learned a lesson. Keno, you're listening to this, I'm sure. I hope that you finally learned a lesson um, about following through on things you said you were going to do. And I hope everything's okay in your life. Mm -hmm. Like, like definitely uh, take care of yourself because um, the mob is vicious. The mob is vicious and, you know, just who knows why you did the things you did. If it was a straight grift, you pulled it off poorly. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't a grift and if it was due to, like, real life circumstances, I'm sorry, that sucks. That really sucks. <laughs> like, that super sucks. I, I promise I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because that really sucks. Like... <laughs> But yeah, I think we talked about the thing. Do you have a happy? Um, so I, I, I don't know if my happy is a happy. Um, it's a something. Okay. Um, so remember the girl with the, uh, with the protect clean fiction website? Yeah. So I'm, I'm reading her book. Oh, you got it? I did. I did. I did. I bought it. I bought it. Um, I didn't get the signed version. Oh. Um, I just bought it on Amazon because I don't know. I don't know. I just, I feel like that would be, you know, like, please sign this to the most degenerate person on earth. <laughs> like, it would probably be awful and <laughs> be not a very good boundary. Um, so I, I bought it off Amazon and I am currently, I think I'm, to chapter six or chapter seven but i've been going through it with uh with a highlighter and a pen um and i am fully i'm giving it my full attention we are doing a critical read Ooh. because you know how aunties are always like you must engage your media critically mm -hmm. um i am engaging the media and uh spoiler maybe uh, for a future episode of uh, Blissfully Aware, but Bliss's book fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, really? I couldn't <laughs> even imagine. It going. Oh my god. Oh, but anyway, I'm having a great time. I'm actually kind of enjoying myself. So, well, that's good. It's a it's a happy of some kind, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 kind of enjoying myself because because I I've I've given myself permission to write in this book, and usually I don't do that. Um, so I'm actually having a good time being able to uh, to highlight in it and and write in it. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I kind of wish I've been reading um, a Court of Thorns and Roses, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry to anybody out there who likes that book series. I don't. <laughs> it's very popular. It's bad. It's poorly written. It's uh it's sex scenes are not 5 out of 5 as I was told they were. <laughs> um I bet that book um I bet that book looks like it was written by like our lord and savior Stephen King next to um poor abigail's book that i'm reading oh probably probably yeah. <laughs> but i wish i had a physical copy because i've just been reading through it going god i want to highlight this and just write out so many things <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> why being the biggest one i think i would write in the margins for most of them 
<laughs> why? why this? <laughs> Just why? <laughs> That's so funny. Um, <sighs> but yeah, poor Abigail. I I gotta know. We have to do an episode. I got to know more about this book. Oh, I have so many notes. Um, I, I can just go through it. I could, we could go through it chapter by chapter. Like it is, it is pretty, uh, <sighs> you know, what's really confusing to me, you know, not to get on a tangent or anything, um, but to get on a tangent, what's really confusing to me is that a lot of the Goodreads reviews mentioned that there was an age gap. Mm -hmm. Um, but to my deductions, there is no age gap. Oh. So I'm really confused where the Google reviewers are getting this age gap information from because there's there's no age gap. Like, the, the main character is 19, and um, we don't have a solid age for the male main character, but he can't be older than, like, 20, 21. Age gap right there. Yeah, well, <laughs> more than know, a year. <laughs> they weren't born on the same day. There's an age gap. Problematic. It's problematic. How could you, Abigail? I thought you wanted purity in fiction, Abigail. Yeah, I thought I thought this was supposed to be pure. This isn't pure. They weren't born on the same day. Yeah. Um. We will. We can delve into that. Um. We can delve into that fully because it's um. It is. It's interesting. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, my happy will have to be obviously that I went to Canada to see Kelty and Kendra. It was fantastic. I was up there for two weeks. It was nice to get away. And breathe air in a different place that's just always so refreshing and grounding. And I mean, getting to see my friends is obviously the best part. But the little, the little good part <laughs> is just recharging in a completely different place from my home. Like, mm, I feel just that. getting out of Dodge. <laughs> but then I got to see Kelty and Kendra and it was fantastic. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Shout out to Kelty and Kendra. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Yes, hi, Kelty and Kendra. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I think that'll do it for us this week. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to find us online, you can find us on TikTok, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and YouTube at Blissfully Show. If you're watching us on YouTube, hi, hello. Uh, give us a like, a comment, a subscribe. If there's something you'd like to see covered, like this week, just pop that in the comments. Uh, or hit us up, you know, on any of the socials. And yeah, thanks for joining us. Bye! Bye! <laughs> Obama? <laughs> what is that, some kind of sauce?